Welcome to Salcedo Paranormal. It is Monday, May 30th, 2022. And tonight I'll be sharing paranormal news. As always, you can find all the episodes of the podcast along with links to social media, ways to donate, and ways to contact me at the podcast page, which is Salcedo Paranormal dot podbean dot com that's s a l s i d o paranormal dot podbean dot com always happy to hear from you all whether you have comments or questions or topic suggestions for shows or if you have stories of paranormal experiences whether they're your own or from others that you trust i'd love to have you either on the show or if you'd um rather you can just send me uh text documents um, either through email or discord messages through discord and I will read those on the show um, this week as far as right now the plan is today and Friday will be news then paranormal news shows Tuesday and Thursday will be the true paranormal stories from the web and Wednesday uh, as of now it looks like we will be doing um, that comic book episode that we didn't get to do last week so um with derek so that should be fun um that's it for this week and uh i think we can go on from there so uh let me get to this first news story here now all these links will be in the episode description uh both on the podcast and youtube feeds and of course i've included them all these links already in the uh the live stream chat for tonight as well definitely recommend anyone that listens to the show if you're able to um join the discord and listen to the show live um i always recommend that because then you can leave comments during the live live streams and uh i can read them and they uh they help make the conversation go on so bring up you all bring up things that i don't think of so um anyway again to this uh first article here so this one is from egypttoday.com and uh let's see here just looking for okay this is from uh not sure of the first name, but the last name is Marie on this website anyway. And uh, so this one is oldest diplomatic documents in history. Why did the pharaohs write the Amarna letters? And so this is, um, these are going back to the era of, of the ancient egyptians these are apparently um these letters are 3400 years old and but of course they're written on clay tablets um not on any kind of paper um that's how a lot of things i'm from what i've seen have been written back then which is really amazing uh to me uh, and they're considered the oldest diplomatic documents ever found that include written correspondence between the ancient Egyptians and the kings of uh, nearby areas. So and these letters are mainly um, correspondence between the Egyptian rulers and their representatives in the nearby kingdoms of Canaan, Canaan, Canaan. I think I was reading the next word here, and uh, Amaru, Am Amaru, or the leaders of the neighboring king kingdoms during the era of the New Kingdom of Egypt between 1360 and 1332 BC. Um, I should probably start when I do these saying at the very beginning. I'm probably not going to get all the names right. In terms of pronunciation so um these letters were found in upper egypt which i believe is the south actually it's um the upper and lower 
are referring to the elevation, not so much the direction um, of the two parts of the kingdom or the area. Um, and they were found in, I'm not going to try to say that one, but it was the ancient Egyptian capital founded by uh, the pharaoh Akhenaten. 1350 between or between 1350 and 130 BC during the 18th dynasty of Egypt. They have um, pictures of these things on this in this file, and they're really amazing um, to look at because um, they really are. They're tablets, and there's to me it doesn't look like much of anything, but there's I'm sure I know there's different. Uh, Basically, there's writing on there. So it was their form of writing back then. So, I uh, definitely recommend looking at these articles for the pictures as well. And um, it says the language that these were written was not a uh, familiar language to or in Egyptian history. It was written mostly in a script known as Akkadian Cuneiform, I think that's how you say that, which was the writing system that uh, was most commonly used in ancient Mesopotamia, not in ancient ancient Egypt. So um, this goes into a lot more detail. I think I'm just going to leave the rest of it for you all to look look at and and uh, and read because there's a lot more details here than I can really try to summarize um, in a show like this, especially with nine more articles to uh, to talk about. But um, I like this. I like this article. Uh, let me see here. I don't know. Let me see here. Um, yeah, I got 10 articles today. Um, I don't know. They they look like, let's see, they're made, it, made to roll and bed on clay. Oh, I don't know. They just look like stones with... To me, they just look like squiggles and pits and stuff like that. So, But that, obviously, that's me with low vision. So um, you can check out the article, and uh, and maybe they'll talk more about how that was done in there. I'm not sure. I don't remember it saying for sure. So, But, uh, but yeah, so that's the first article. And... Uh, I do like having the links already in the, the chat, I've decided. This makes it a lot easier to just go on. So this next article, uh, we're going to, this is, um, let's see here, this is from the bl.com, T-H-E-B-L. And this is from Andre Vaca, I'm not sure if I'm saying the name right. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, but this one is titled Traditional Chinese Art and Its Connection with the Divine. Um, and so this one is talking about um, Chinese art. Uh, for centuries, uh, that China has been known, according to this article, as the strongest and most powerful region in each, East Asia. Uh, not in terms just of the military, but as a source of culture, technology, trade, and art. Um, so let's see here. Mentions the, the there's been a, a strong belief in, in a god or got multiple gods. Uh, basically, as far back as, or at least it's, um, Mentioned that this belief has inspired the culture of of this region of the world, um, and it mentions that that area, that kingdom, or that um, that civilization is over five thousand years old, uh, making it the oldest, one of the oldest. I guess this is the oldest in the world. I don't know for sure. Um, talk here about the um, the Yellow Emperor, which was known by a different name here. Um, and, and, uh, there are legends that talk about him in those times, how, uh, and other, uh, different deities transferred knowledge of, 
um, culture and other aspects of life to the people in that area. So, um, that gives names for all these pe this, these figures, but it references um, the knowledge of characters, as in the writing, uh, agriculture, and then um, fire as well. So, and it mentions the different, um, basically the different kinds of types of um, belief systems there, which such as Taoism, uh, Confucianism, and um, let's see here. Looking at, uh, I think I missed one here. Buddhism, I think it was. Yes, there it is. Okay. So, um, goes more into, uh, detail here about all of that. Um, it says the purpose of art in Chinese culture here. This is the next section. Um, and, uh, mentions... Really, just the the way daily life was put into art, and um, so yeah, just wanted to share this one N neat idea. It mentions calligraphy, which is um, basically a kind of writing that is really an art form. I've seen it over the years in different places online, and it's really amazing. So this is a in depth another in depth article that I'll let you all. Check out more. Um, mentions paintings and and uh, sculpture, so and even dance. So it's going into a lot of details here on that on all the different kinds of art. And uh, so yeah, I thought that, that was a a good article there. So a lot more details. I didn't get to read it all. Might have to check it out more later too as well. So let me close a couple of these tabs I'm not using anymore. And then I'll go on to the next one. Um, and uh, we're going to be in the kind of ancient civilizations section of this podcast here for a while. Um, I had like six links from the, just that category basically alone this time. You never know. Sometimes it's, it's more UFO or paranormal, but this time it happened this way. And I'm not complaining. So, this next one is from bigthink.com. And, uh, let's see here. It's called Ancient Technology That Was Centuries Ahead of Its Time. And, um, mentions th these different inventions that they mention in this article here show that civilizations of the past were a lot more advanced than we might have thought, which I love that idea. And I, I agree with that. So, um, looking here. Okay, I'm looking for the... Okay, this is from Tim Brinkoff. I'm not sure if I'm not saying that right name right or not. Also, this article has an audio version, which I like. Um, I didn't see that until after, so I'm going to have to listen to it later. But, um, mentions, I like these articles too from this website. They have a, a section at the very beginning called Key Takeaways. And it says, archaeologists, archeolo if I can speak, that'd be good, repeatedly stumble uh, on, upon artifacts that seem way too advanced for the times from which they originate. It says, the ancient Greeks, for instance, developed... Uh, clock capable capable of calculating and tracking planetary motions and solar eclipses, among other things. Um, mentions that these things are often called ahead of their time, but I like the idea of this article in that in reality they are reflections of the ingenuity of their respective civilizations. So. Um, let me get further into the article here, if I can, there's some, there we go. Um, let's see here. Okay, I skipped over some text. So, um, this is talking about different devices, um, 
Let me get to the part where it talks about them, the individual ones here. And uh, first talks about Greek fire, which are flames that don't go, don't go out in water. Um, these were used against uh, a, a fleet of ships, uh, it says a Muslim fleet of ships, uh, that attempted to um, lay siege to the Byzantine city of Constantinople in 674. That says their ships were doused in flames. At first, the 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 fleet was not a lot uh, not alarmed. Fire was used a lot in naval warfare, and could be put out easily with cloth or dirt or water. But this time was different because once it was ignited, it couldn't be put out um, easily. I guess. And after the the entire fleet burned down, the there was still fire on top of the water. Um, let's see here. So, apparently there's no mentions that there's no recipe known as of now to what that actually was. But, um, uh, historians suggest that it might have been, uh, involved petroleum, sulfur, and or gunpowder. Um, mentions that Petroleum seems the likeliest candidate uh, as gunpowder didn't become available, uh, easily available until uh, in the area until the 14th century. And sulfur lacked the destructive power described by um, witnesses of these events. And um, let's see here. Apparently the, the, uh, the thing that they're talking about in this article here more even than just the fire itself wasn't the the fire but the uh there was a pressure pump that was used to launch it in the direction of their enemies and um let's see here it says that uh basically the uh, researchers or have a hard time creating a historically accurate pump that could have propelled its the uh, the chemicals far enough to be of any use during the naval battles, um, where ships the enemy ships may be dozens or even hundreds of uh, meters meters away from from each other. So that's the first item it mentions here, um, and I'm going to try to save this one, I think, say this one, I think I got it. This is, the next thing it mentions here in this article is the Anti Antikythera mechanism, which is a cosmic clock that came about before Copernicus. And these articles, again, these have um, pictures in them too. So this uh, device was found off the coast of the area, which basically where God's name, apparently Antikythera, which is a small Greek island located between Kythera and Crete. I'm not sure if I'm saying that right or not. Um, the discovery happened in, in 1901, so over 120 years ago now. Um, when there were divers that were going out in search of sea sponges but they found this as well among um, wreckage from a from a, a ship I guess um, apparently the item was incomplete and in poor condition but seems to have been made of some 37 bronze gears stored inside a wooden box um, at first, the um, so scholars speculated that uh, was, which apparently the device is over 2,200 years old, had um, been used as an ancient computer. Uh, of course, this was doubted at first, but um, in the 1970s, this was actually confirmed 
um, at least uh, the current consensus says that the mechanism mechanism was. Oh, I never heard of this word before. An orrery, which O R R E R Y, which is a model of the solar system that calculates and tracks uh, celestial time. Um, it said that CT scans um, showed that the uh, basically the device was a lot more complex than originally thought. And um, apparently it's been duplicated or attempted to be du du duplicated. Uh, and it combines, it says it combines cycles from Babylonian astronomy, mathematics from Pluto's academy, Plato's, I'm sorry, not Pluto's, and ancient Greek astronomical theories. Um, so it goes into more details about being able to, um, the article, anyway, goes into more details talking about how it could predict or calculate the ecliptic longitudes of the moon and sun, the phases of the moon, the synodic, I'm not sure about that one, phases of the planets, the excluded days of the met metonic calendar, and the Olympiad cycle, cycle, among many other things. So, um, let's see here, I'm just looking to see how many other things this article mentions. Um, let's see here. So it goes into more, more items here in this article, but I'll leave you all, uh, leave it, the rest of that to, to everyone to check out on your own. But I just love the, um, the idea of this article and, and, uh, the, the items that it talks about in here. So, um, especially the Greek, the Greek fire, I've heard of that one as well. So let me, <clears throat> excuse me, a moment. But yeah, I've, I've heard about that as well and, and that device as well. So I thought that was neat. But, uh, let me see, let me look at the chat here. Okay, so, um, APOC says, some of my favorite stuff, ancient stuff. A lot of evidence suggests that they were more advanced. Uh, that device uh, is amazing. Oh, and then APOC put a link in the, uh, stream chat about this. Uh, maybe I'll include this in the, uh, the description as well. Uh, this is about the Antikytheric, the Kythera mechanism. Uh, so yeah. Uh, let me see here. It even told the date and the year of the games they had in the area. Wow. So yeah. That's some, uh, really amazing technology there. So. Um. Alright. So I'll move on to the next article here. Um, uh, nationalgeographic.co.uk That's a website I haven't actually um, used any articles from yet, but this time it kind of fit. And this one is, let's see here. They have the title on the, okay. This one is called, What Was the Mystery Message Written on this mummy's wrappings and um let's see here this is by marina escalano poveda i'm not sure if i'm saying that right um but anyway so this is about uh as the title says a, a, a mummy um so this article starts off talking about uh, in 1868, the Museum of Zagreb, I'm not sure, in Croatia, which was part of the Austro-Hungarian Empire, uh, um, found an, or got an Egypt Egyptian mummy of a woman. Um, her previous owner had removed the wrappings, but held on to them. Uh, apparently, 
she had been an ordinary person, according to this article, not royalty or of any uh, priestly class. But the wrappings were strange because apparently there was writing on the, these these strips. Um, but it wasn't Egyptian hieroglyphics. It was a script that at the time was unknown. Um, but then eventually in 1891, that museum agreed to send the wrappings to Vienna to see if they could translate the markings. Um, the, the bandages were examined by uh, an, another Egypt, Egyptologist, I'm not sure, let's see, Jacob Krell, who said that, um, or who was able to finally break the code. And these letters, again, they were not from Egypt, uh, but they were Etrus Etruscan, which were the words um, of a culture that dominated pre-Roman Italy. Um, and uh, whoever wrapped the mummy centuries earlier had to use strips torn from an um, Etruscan linen book. And um, this was, let's see here. There apparently these books are rare. Um, from what I've read in this article, they are they can be found in many classical works, references to them. But surviving, um, actual surviving books like this have been impossible to find. Um, apparently, due to the arid climate of Egypt, uh, combined with the uh, chemicals or the the materials used to dry out the mummy. Um, oh, sorry, but um, in this case, actually, they're talking about how these uh, these strips are preserved, which is the Egyptian climate, along with the 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 things used to preserve the mummy, and the um, these things led to the, these wrappings surviving all these years. Um, it says the the wrappings were not only the first uh, linen Etruscan text, text to be found intact, but also the longest text ever found in that language. Um, so let's see here. And uh, so it goes into more detail here uh, about the area of the world. So, but um, yeah, so I thought that was an amazing thing. It makes you wonder why a book like that was used, if it had no value to the people in that area, or if they were just, if they weren't part of royalty or um, any kind of system, then maybe they, that was all they found at the time, which is sad in a way. Um, but... Uh, it's still an amazing discovery, I think, in a way. So, um, that's a good question. I don't know. Uh, APOC wonders, says, I wonder if they ever left books or tablets or writing inside the mummies for safekeeping. I don't know. That'd be something to look into, I guess, possibly. Um, that could have, I mean, that could have spiritual or religious or just cultural reasons for that. There could be reasons for that too, possibly. Mystical. I mean, whatever you want to... A lot of different ways you can go with that. Um, I mean, there are cultures that use... Um, basically, they put prayers on smaller pieces of paper and use those as wards against negative... Uh, beings, negative energy, so um, I'd wonder why then that might wouldn't be done for the um, in the case of of burying individuals and mummies and everything, so that could be um, that could be a good little research project to do at some point so that's a very good question but uh yeah, so there's a lot more to that article, and again, I always like to leave 
a good part of the article for everyone to check out on their own. Um, so uh, let's see here. Uh, let's see here. Apox says I'm not sure if they've X-rayed all of them. Yeah. So yeah, it's um no. I think that'd be fun to 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 check into, and maybe we'll hear about it more over time. So yeah, you never know. That's true. Okay, so um, let's see here. Looking at okay, this is the last one of these ancient civilization articles here. This is from uh, another website I hadn't heard of. And this is called, this is the website is natureworldnews.com. Uh, the title of this one is "Man Knocks Down Basement Wall Discovers Ancient Underground City That Housed Twenty Thousand People." And as someone that likes darkness and and being um, kind of inside a lot, this is I love this. I can I could I could I think I could do okay in an underground city. Um, but this is by Rich Co. I C H the regular name then Co. I'm not sure about the last name, but um. Anyway, so this is. Basically, now let's see here. There's a picture that include in the article. Um, it really is amazing. So, definitely recommend checking it out. But, um, <coughs> so, according to reports, this says the, um, this anonymous man, they, 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 don't, they don't give his name, which I don't blame him. Um, but they, this, uh, person hit his wall with, with the basement wall with a sledgehammer and um, found a tunnel behind it that led to more tunnels and other levels and it later turned out to be an underground city that was 18 stories deep. Wow. I hadn't seen that part. It had a chapel, schools, and stables. Um, it says archaeologists from the Turkish Department of Culture uh, estimate that the underground complex, again, could hold 20,000 people. Uh, they mentioned that work on the underground city could have begun as early as the 8th and 7th centuries BC. And it says that manuscripts dating back to 370 mentioned that underground cities were about the size that a family about um that's weird um but anyway so yeah this is uh mentions that some of these cities were made to keep animals and store food as well so um let me see here and apparently this is uh the city has ventilation with more than 15,000 shafts, about 10 centimeters wide, reaching the first and second levels of the city. Um, the upper levels, it says, which were the best ventilated, were used as living and sleeping quarters. And the lower levels, <coughs> excuse me, were used mainly as storage and, of course, dungeons. <coughs> excuse me. So, um... Let's see here. It says experts stated that the cities were probably used for defense. Um, res uh, it says that people in the lower levels could cut off the water supply to the upper levels. And this is um, so that this was so that people that were invading could uh, could not poison the supply of water to the community. Um, mentions that it had um, entrances that could be blocked uh, from the inside with rolling stone doors. Um, and then it mentions that a lot of the passages were built so narrow that attackers would have had to line up basically single file to attack, which would make it easier for to defend against. So, um, 
Let's see here. It says some studies that uh, say that the oldest part of this complex was excavated around 2000 BC. Others say that the, I'm not even sure about that one. Um, but uh, yeah, so it goes into more detail here about this, this place, but just can you imagine being in, um, doing some work on your home and having to, for whatever reason, try to tear down part or all of a wall and then you find that behind the wall. That must have been really amazing. I don't know. Um, no, it wasn't that one. I don't think it was. They didn't say that one. But, um, but um, yeah, it does seem like there's, um, APOC was mentioning these places that there's these kind of places that are being, being found in Turkey. Um, yeah, that seems like uh, there's a lot of these places in the area. Because I know I've been hearing about them in the news as well here and there, so. Really amazing. And that, I bring these up in these episodes because if you think about these places that are that old, I used to say that there's not some energy still in there from the people that were there. Or that that kind of um, the various rocks and minerals and water that are going to those places can't contribute to some weird possible paranormal activity that could happen in these places. So, and, um, so I like to include these. So, anyway, um, so that's it for that article for now. Like I said, definitely you can check it out for more details. And, um, this one is a little bit of a tie, uh, a crossover between, uh, UFO related, alien related stuff and, also, not quite ancient, but historical materials um, with that have the subject matter. And this is from this is actually from BBC.com, and this says rare book predicting alien life discovered in Cotswold. <clears throat> so uh, let's see here. And let me see, I'm looking for the author of this article here. I'm not seeing the name so easily. Um, but it's here for you to check out. It just has the, uh, the release date on it, as far as I can tell. But um, this book was uh, found, uh, it was published basically in 1698, which was found at a free... Uh, it was a free antique evaluation event uh, in the UK. And um, the, the man who found it was a books valuer. I hadn't seen this in there before, um, named Jim Spencer. And um, this article, or I mean this book, let's see, let me look here real quick. Um, was by uh, someone named Christi Christian Hudgens. I'm not sure about that. Talks about a fascination with the potential existence of extraterrestrial beings. Um, it goes into um, what the valuer thought of the book and everything, but I just really um, like that this book was found and from an author that was interested in all this stuff um all these strange quote unquote strange things um way back then so i really like that this was found and and uh and shared online so i don't think i need to get too deep into that one but um but yeah i wanted to share that article so i just like that so, um, this next one is from KIISFM.iHeart.com. And, um, this one says, uh, strange UFO photographed by Mars Rover. 
This was by Dave Basner. I think I've read an article from him before, or shared an article by him before. And it says that, um, it mentions the different rovers that have been landed on Mars so far. Uh, but um, it's, this article is talking about a different article, or a different uh, rover, uh, Spirit, back in 2003. Uh, in around that time. And um, apparently at some point while it was there, this uh, this rover found evidence that Mars was, used to be a lot, have a lot more water there than, than it has now. And showed um, data, or provided data on the, um, I think it means Martian, but it says M-A-R-I-N, but I'm thinking Martian. Uh, the winds on Mars, and it also shared, uh, took hundreds of photos, and someone looking through these photos um, just apparently found one that appears to show a UFO. And um, let's see here. Looking at. Uh, Oh, now this this article is saying video un, under uh, unavailable, video is private. But uh, I did see an image of of the um, the it might still be in this article. I'm not sure. But uh, it was almost like a cylindrical object. Um, and of course, there's people that some people say it was not anything. It was basically some particles on the lens of the camera. Um, or a drone, which I don't know about that one, but um, just the idea that there's pictures being found um, from that go back because they haven't all been got, they haven't all been searched yet that might show things that um, are not expected. So I like this article just for that reason. Oh, it does have a picture of it. Uh, I think. Let me look here. I'm just checking out the article here, and um, yeah, so it does have a um, picture of it, and it's, I don't know, it almost looks like it could be a satellite, but it's like, it looks like it's way too low, but um, unless it is just something, some kind of glitch or whatever, but again, with these kind of articles, I just like the idea of the possibility of something being found there, and these, especially in these other planets where there's a lot less um, chance of random uh, drones from from basically citizens or from gov other governments. Um, a lot less that could be happening there when it's on another planet, at least as far as we know. So let's see here. Um, that's it for that one. And. And, uh, so, but I thought that was a neat, neat thing here. Um, oh, wow. Yeah, APOC is sharing more links here in the, the chat about this, uh, these, uh, these cities. APOC says they've only unearthed about 3% of the new one, the new underground city. The, the ventilation and doors are genius. Yeah. And then, um. Yeah, so these cities definitely, I think, are important to watch as um, these underground cities are... It's important to watch everything that comes out from from um, these investigations. So, wow, 60 to 70,000 people, according to this one video here, this one link here. So there could be ones that are even bigger than that one. So that one that was mentioned in the article I just shared in this show here... That's like a smaller city, and sounds like so. But um, but yeah, yeah, really amazing. Let's see here. Um, and then Napoc says they think that many of them are connected, and that's a. I I can believe that. There used to be a TV show I used to love to watch, and some of you may know what I'm thinking of already. Um called Cities of the Underworld. I think it was on the Discovery Networks. And I used to love that show. 
because they used, to, they used to go all over the place and they'd they'd show um, different locations around the world that were just underground and they'd talk about the history of them and everything. So um, I'm say I was say when that when I couldn't find that show on anymore. Yeah, yeah, I think there, you might be able to find might be able to find that on YouTube. I know you could years ago, but I'm not sure if you can now. But um, yeah, so. But let me see here. Let me go on to this next article here. Let's, let's see here. I think I just read this one. Let's see here. Uh, oh, no, I didn't, didn't share this one yet. Okay. <clears throat> so this is from uh, Inverse. Inverse.com. Uh, no. Yeah, Inverse.com. And this one says, uh, it says, I mean, probably not, but 70-year-old astronomy uh, photos may be clues to uh, alien visitors. And then it says it's a study. And um, this, it mentions that these photos or these pictures were taken prior to the launch of Sputnik, which is the Russian uh, satellite, and it mentions that these pictures show satellite-like objects near Earth. Let's see here. Okay, there's the article. And um, looking for the author, and uh, I'm not seeing one, but. Um, Definitely, you can check out these articles, and maybe you'll see the actual uh, information that I'm not seeing right now. So, <coughs> excuse me. Um, so this one says, um, this article, these are apparently photographic plates that contain images of the night sky. Uh, it says a few astronomers say they've found... Um, something weird, which are flashes of light that appear and then disappear, <laughs> like ghosts, it says. Um, it says we found one image where nine stars were out there and then they vanished. And they are not there half an hour earlier and they are not there six days later. Um, so these are from researchers at this Nordic Institute for Theoretical Physics. And then it says, and then you wonder, is this real? So let's see here. Um, it mentions there isn't any readily available astronomical explanation for what these uh, vanishing points of light, which researchers call transients, might be. The dots might be defects in the photographic emulsions or uh, image artifacts from when astronomers first scanned the plates. But um, apparently the small team of astronomers have been um, looking into this more and looking into the possibility more that these flashes could be something else, which would be possibly extraterrestrial objects. Um, so here's something I, I hadn't thought of. This says, a shiny spinning object passing by Earth would leave a line of dots in a long exposure image of the night sky. Um, this says asteroids or meteors aren't likely to look like that. So, um, so yeah, this is an, um, really amazing idea that that there could be pictures of um possibly ufos p from 70 plus years ago so and or other things maybe even orbs who knows um so yeah that's the idea behind that article so i just want to share that i thought that was really amazing um it does seem like there are scientists now maybe slowly the tide is starting to turn and um more people are looking into these things and um and yeah uh 
Apex says reminds me of the ast the NASA NASA astronaut videos. Yeah, it's like earlier versions of that, except now it's in these. It's more of um these photographic plates. So so yeah, that's that article. Again, all these will be um in the in the episode description. And I have two more here. These are more on the um, paranormal side of things. I think more ghostly side of things, as these articles suggest. Um, this one says, this is from stroudtimes.com, S-T-R-O-U-D, times.com. And this one says, unexplained, uh, quotation marks, ghost, caught on CCTV, and there's a question mark at the end of it. And um, this article is by Ashley Loveridge. And um, it says that this, um, this was from, basically this picture, um, this video was, looked like a shadowy Grim Reaper-like figure which apparently in the video floated past the camera in full view and moved slowly across the road towards this um this home from the owner of the home i guess um and uh, whose first name is shane i won't i won't go into all the details but um it says that uh shane says he didn't believe in ghosts but he does now um, because of this footage. And, um, this was, this video was recorded at, um, quarter to six in the morning. And apparently this was picked up by one camera, but not the other. Um, so, mentions just different, uh, Let's see here. Mentions no scientific proof of ghosts, but um, tens of thousands of people across the globe are convinced that some of something happens, um, and some people live on after death, and energies from these spirits can be uh, captured on camera. So, um, just a quick article there, but uh, there I've seen other articles over the years about Grim Reaper-like figures being captured on cameras. So. Um, that was, I thought that was a neat one to share. So, and I believe it even has the video and a still here, I think, as well. So, um, you can definitely check those out as well. So. And, uh, that brings us to the last article here, which is another one of these collections of stories. And this is from WOKQ.com. And this is um, 16 creepy ghost stories from New Hampshire locals. So this is all just stories in the in apparently this the one state here in the U.S. of New Hampshire. And um, let's see here. I will um, I'll read at least one or two of these here. This one says when I first moved into my condo, some of the Lights and my TV would turn off mysteriously. Uh, sometimes I heard footsteps on the stairs when no one else was around. The prior owner had passed away, so I started just saying his name out loud when things when the things happened. Uh, and it says all is quiet now. So that's um. That's neat in a way. Maybe the person that had passed on was just looking for recognition, possibly. Um, but uh, at least it quieted down there for the for the writer in that case. Um, let me see here. So this one says, My friend used to work in the historical houses at Strawberry Bank Museum, and he and his co-workers never liked being alone in one particular house. Uh, it says, my friend experienced doors slamming shut 
and a lamp flying down the stairs. So, sounds like poltergeist type activity there. I'm going to look at one more here because this is mentions a nursing home. This one mentions a nursing home. Um, this one says, at the nursing home I used to work at, there were voices. I guess they were they heard. And I saw a white orb a few times. And a few weeks before one of our World War II veterans passed away, one of the lights started blinking in Morse code. That's something. I wonder how often that happens when people don't even notice. Because how many people know, know Morse code? So that's another one for you all to check out. There's a lot more stories in that, that uh, article. So, um, And that's basically it for this episode. So, um, hopefully, uh, hopefully you all enjoyed that. I really did as well. Um, yeah, ghost story stuff. They, uh, Apoc says, nope. So, yeah. Um, let's see here. Um, so, yeah, I definitely recommend, as I said, always, I always say, joining the Discord and, and, um, even if you can't be, be here for the live streams, if you check out the, the stream chat channel a lot of people will put images and links to different things that are associated with what i'm what we're talking about in the um in that channel and uh so it's a lot of fun to be be in here and to be talking with you all that that uh show up all the time for these things which is really amazing to me so thank you all again for listening um i'll be back tomorrow night with true paranormal stories from the web on the next episode of South Cedo Paranormal. Take care, everyone.